Hello to all of you. Today we are going to discuss about hierarchical models in smart PLS, also known as higher order models. Now, what do I mean by this concept? Let us understand. <clears throat> in lower order, we are having price, service quality, personnel, service cap. These are constructs which have been captured with the help of some measured variable, which we have already seen in my previous videos. Now, these constructs combine together and they make one more construct that is price, service quality, personnel and service cap combines together and make the construct which is satisfaction. Now this is considered to be the higher order model or a second order model or a second degree model. Now depending upon this there exists four types of relationship. The first is the nomenclature will always start with lower order and then the, we will give the name of higher order. Reflective, reflective then formative, reflective, you can see arrows are coming inside and therefore formative. This is reflective, here reflective, formative and formative, formative. If arrows are coming inside the construct, it is formative. So first lower order name will come and then higher order name will come. Now there are in which conditions we should go for higher order constructs. The first condition is when we are having a very high correlation. Uh, that is if my VIF is of shooting 3 or uh, there is a failure of discriminant validity in such scenario we should go for higher order construct. First condition when lower order constructs are similar or have a high correlation it is an indication that we can go for second order reflective model is to be used. When lower order constructs are not having similar or have low correlation that is an indicator, indication that it is a second order formative model to be used. The second condition is if correlation is high, then we can go for Cronbeck alpha. Uh, uh, sorry, we get Cronbeck alpha about 0.7, which is again an indication it is a reflective construct. If correlation is low, then we get Cronbeck alpha. Uh, it is we are bound to get low uh, Cronbeck alpha, and it is an indication that for, it is a formative construct. VIF, if correlation is high, multicolonarities will be very high, which is again an indication that constructs are reflective. If correlation is low, VIF will be low, which is again indication that constructs are formative. Now, in which scenario we go for higher order? If the discriminant validity is violated, it means that uh, VIF, if I talk about uh, foreigner Larkin criterion or the heterotrate monotrate ratio, if these are violated, then we have to go for higher order models. Remember, the use of second order reflective construct uh, or a, a second order model is more a compulsion than the choice of the researcher. Why I'm saying this thing? Because you have run the basic model and you found that VIF was off suiting, which uh, and therefore your, your validity failed. In such scenario, we are introducing one more higher order construct to resolve the problem. Uh, HOC is more a remedy, you can say higher order construct is more a remedy to the solution of the multicollinearity, right? Now, how to resolve the problem of, uh, is it a reflective, If is, it, is my higher order reflective or formative? Can I resolve this problem with the help of CTA or not? So friends, CTA will not help you here. That is confirmatory tetrad analysis which you which used to run in the lower order. It will not at all help you here. And here the researcher will have to take the decision that my higher order is a reflective or a formative. Now, what are the advantages of HOC? One, multicollinearity will be drastically reduced. The number of relations, you are very, you can say that the path too many, too much clumsy diagram will get clean and you will be able to represent the things in a very nice order and a nice format. Now in this, to, so, to do the analysis of higher order constructs, we are having two approaches. One is extended repeated indicator approach and another that is a two-stage approach. Okay. In repeated indicators approach, what we are doing, the indicators of first order constructs are used as the indicators for second order construct. What we are doing, let's see. This construct ABC uh, is a representative of the, is represented by the measured variable a b and c df is represented by d e and f ghi is represented by g h and i now this oh, all this are are connecting to the higher order construct so if i want to solve this first of all let's see what the problem will arise when i will introduce such hoc in smart pls so i'll go here 
and i'll say that the job satisfaction and organizational commitment are are creating one more higher order constraint right so what i have to do i will break this line and i'll say that my job satisfaction is job satisfaction and organizational commitment and is making the higher order constraint now let me name this this is HOC higher order but you can see it's giving me the red signal now this red signal is a clear indication that this is not a solution we are not able to solve the problem we are not able to run the analysis right now this is a flaw in the design and we have to solve this problem so what uh, what is the solution the solution is that all the measured variables of lower order construct are to be loaded on higher order construct and that will give that will solve the problem let's see is it working js1 js2 js3 and js4 they are loaded here done then oc1 oc2 oc3 oc4 they are loaded here now there are some conditions uh, for while using this approach let's see what are the condition what we have done we have loaded like this you have already seen in the smart pls the condition is the statement on higher order construct should be same as a lower order construct it means that if you are having total eight statements in lower order then in higher order also it should be eight the direction should not change what do i mean by this the direction should not change is first of all see 4 plus 4 8 and this is also 8 now this direction this is reflective this is reflective so you know so in higher order also this statement should be representing reflective also it should not be like this that in lower order these statements are reflective here it is reflective reflective and in higher order you make it uh, formative no you cannot do that the direction has to remain same so if it is formative 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 now hide this i'll hide this to make the diagram clear right let us go back now this this will this is not the solution we we feel that this is a solution but this will arise this will give a this will give a more or rather a new problem will occur and the problem is let us understand this uh independent variables now you loaded on the hoc and now they are dependent variable so independent variable and dependent variable has become same just assume that this is y and this is also y and you are running regression analysis on y to y or correlation between y to y y to y what will happen you will get the correlation equal to 1 your r square that is a coefficient of determination r square will also become 1 now what's the problem let us understand first of all see that are we getting high r square here we will go in calculate pls algorithm and start the calculation when you will see r square it is almost reached to 1 see this it is almost almost reached to 1 now what is the problem the problem is when i will run the bootstrapping and start the calculation just a minute okay now see uh let me go on the canvas this has become completely insignificant and the path coefficient is also zero why it is happening the reason is that this dependent variable which is having the measured variable same as the independent variable or rather hoc which is represented by some measured variable the same are there on job satisfaction and oc so wo, wo, so virtually you are running y with y and therefore r square will reach to 1 now what will happen in such scenario <clears throat> now when i load any other construct on hoc there is no room or space for further explanation for r square and therefore this path will become insignificant and therefore our analysis of hoc is not working so how to resolve this problem 
see r square we have already discussed that this is creating a problem okay so the solution was given by baker in 2012 the solution was that the new construct which you are introducing connect it with lower order constructs directly now what will happen you will get two effects one is the direct effect and another is a indirect effect right so your total effect is direct effect plus indirect effect let us see how we will do it in smart pls again we will go back and now we will connect this this to this and this to this so according to the baker this effect is not there it is insignificant fine but we can capture the effect of staying in tension on hoc through the indirect route that is this route staying in tension going to job satisfaction going to hoc and staying in tension going to oc on hoc this effect can be captured so my total effect is the summation of direct effect plus indirect effect okay let's go back on the ppt now we know direct effect is not at all existing it is not taking any any load there is no explanation or the path coefficient is insignificant so my total effect will be the summation of zero plus indirect effect so my total effect exactly is coming that is from is from indirect effect only nothing else right let's go back now here we will run this analysis calculate bootstrapping start the calculation first of all uh, see the path coefficient is it sin insignificant yes this is insignificant direct effect is not at all significant directly go into the specific indirect effect now the effect of staying in tension on hoc it's taking two route one to job satisfaction through hoc and organizational commitment to hoc okay go in specific indirect effect and see staying in tension to job satisfaction the effect is point uh point 104 and staying intention to this route this to route one is 0.334 indirect effect and 0.104 so two routes are there so what will be my the total effect the total effect will be the summation of this two let us do the summation 0.4 3 1 0.438 is it the same thing let us check in the effect total effect there will not be any contribution coming from direct effect because it's zero so total effect is let's see 0.43 nearer to that yes it is 0.438 so this is the extended measures approach now we will see other approaches